Okay, Wednesday morning in the kingdom, we woke up to nasty weather. Yes, nasty weather, like my ex-wife. Oh, yes. All right, so this morning we woke up to plus three, but feels like minus two. And it's gotten windy and nasty, rain and snow. It's just unreal. I'm hiding. And then on the yo-yo scale, plus 37, but feels like plus 28. Ooh, that feels so cold. Yeah. All right, still no government website. The government we weather network, still no readings for this location. Yet the weather network, with all their crap on their site, has the weather. So something's wrong there. The government employee probably has a couple weeks holiday. So nobody's around to, how would you say, adjust the computer with a hammer. Yes, it's nasty today. So I canceled the staff this morning because I'm not plugging the loader in to go play around in the snow. Plus, and the rain, we don't have a windshield wiper. So we have to, uh, how would you say, work appropriately. I think that we'll be in the shop this morning. All right, let's see if we can scroll without getting winded. Yes, the wind is unreal. So that means no dick. Yeah, that's nice. His contract should be over, I think, October 15th will be his last day flying. And then he come back next summer again to torment the old guy. I'll survive the winter with no dick. So I don't need, how would you say, a wellness check every, how would you say, 20 times a day to make sure I'm still alive. Because I'm the old guy at the end of the world holding a stick. Oh, is it nasty. I can see the flags now. I'm not untangling them because they'll self-destruct like me with my beverage some nights. Unreal. Oh, well, we just about made a full rotation. It's chilly. I didn't put my gloves on. I don't know what I was thinking. But, oh, wait, the weather network said it was warm out here. All right, there's a full rotation. Ah, uh, we're going to have to hide in the shop today. Yes, I think so. All right, I better go. Here comes the boss. Wednesday morning in Whoville, it's just after 8 a.m. And as you can see, it is snowing out here again. Look at that. Right before I came out to record, it was a complete whiteout. So let's head inside, let the dogs out if they will go out. It is pretty wet out here. Make breakfast. I'm not sure what we'll be doing in the kingdom today. 9 a.m. and I'm just finishing up breakfast. This is the temperature we're sitting at right now. It's 2 degrees Celsius, which is 35 degrees Fahrenheit. We even had the feels like on the bottom. As you can see, it is still snowing, so let's head inside. The dogs weren't out very long and wait to see what goes on this afternoon. Look at all that snow. It's snowing so much that even the ground is turning white. I'm sure it'll melt away, but look at that. There's some big snow coming down. Not sure if we'll be doing anything in the kingdom today, but look how much snow has come down. I was actually supposed to go over there at 10 a.m. and start moving stuff around and get cutting more firewood, but I don't think that's going to happen this morning, maybe this afternoon if it clears up. Okay, I'm in the loader shed because I turned the baseboard heaters on. Yes, I turned them on for the dogs. Yes, that's the doggy door, the doggy water pail, the doggy food dish. It seems to get moved all over. But this is the loader shed. We have the incandescent lights in here. Yes, but we fixed up the loader shed so well the tax man liked it and taxed me to death on it. Yes, he said it's nicer than my house. So we got the camera here so I can watch the dogs. Oops, there's the camera. There's the thermometer hanging so I can see it. And we had to, how would you say, blow start the fan here because it was shut off all summer. So it needed a little oof. So you clean it out with the air hose and off she goes. Yeah, so the heat blows down onto the doggy beds or whatever. They seem to make a mess of everything. But all right, let's put the ladder away. We're good to go. And now the dogs will be nice and warm. Okay, it's nasty outside. I don't know if you guys can hear the wind howling. Yes, just like those big bad wolves and the three little piggies. Okay, so we took the advice of a YouTube subscriber, Kingdom Follower. Yes, lube up your Sawzall. Put some lube on it. So I blew out the uh, coupler end there with the brake clean, cleaned it good, and then we lubed it up. So hopefully the blade will last more than two strokes and then fall out. Yes. So over here, we're trying to amuse ourselves. So I think the paint is baked on good enough. So we got this one assembled. I think we'll call it number one because the gaskets and everything here are perfect. We put the uh, uh, gasket goo maker on it, our trademark orange, to make sure it seals good. Because you never know, there could be warpage or the amount of paint we put on. It could be too thick. All right, so over here, we took the other one apart. We got it in and then we 
got to dress it up because you don't want any moisture or anything in here so the problem was the guy at the factory didn't get the gasket underneath the ground wire okay so this is how it works that's your wire wire temperature sender and then through to the other side of the heat coil so there's the copper coming out and there's the copper going in so this gasket was so wonky the thing was only touching here and over there there's no other marks on the gasket showing that it was making contact so the first rain or first snowstorm for the first time we take this uh, block heater swimming on a cat into the lake <laughs> this thing's fried out yes so all we're doing is improving upgrading and making it better yes with gasket goo and time okay lunchtime in the kingdom and we got the wood stove going i stocked it up because we are cooking an object in there an item yes we're gonna flame broil lunch in the microwave again so there's the heaters done we got them sealed up but just straighten that gasket out you know quality assurance which should have been done at the factory so we call this one number one and number two or dr seuss thing one and thing two all right so over here while the wood stove is cooking what we need we'll have the lunch so we're all ready to go here so this is the clutch brake thingy me bob that goes on and this is the brake band here so we've come to the conclusion something's missing so maybe this piece was missing for a while maybe it was a piece that went on here and over the years somebody tossed it in the garbage took it apart found it greasy tossed it so we've come up with this harebrained idea get some almost pre-bent uh, steel and it fits nicely in here okay see that Les Netsman that kind of fits nicely in there so we're cooking a length in the wood stove in hopes that we can bend it around like that Ooh, look at that hand and eye coordination all right so in theory I don't think it has to be perfectly round because this thing is only going to be applied when you're how would you say engaging the clutch or stopping the clutch you want the clutch to stop so it's not going to be sitting here so with the movement of the brake shoe or brake clutch band it'll be far enough away so if i'm out quite a bit on the wobbliness i think it'll work out yes because all we got to do is stop the clutch from spinning so we can get it into gear yes <laughs> what are the odds of that all right let's go burn some lunch i mean eat some lunch and relax and when we come back the piece we're in here will be ro rosy red, I hope. Yes, rosy. I knew a lady named Rosie. Oh, that was uh, ACDC's song, Whole Lot of Love. 12 p.m. and I'm just getting ready to make lunch. As you can see, it is still pretty nasty out here. It's been snowing and raining on and off most of the morning. The sun tried to peek out a few times, but as I speak, it's trying to snow again. This is the temperature we're sitting at right now. It's 3 degrees Celsius, which is 37 degrees Fahrenheit. We even have the fields like on the bottom. Now it's time to head inside and make lunch. 1 p.m. and I'm just finishing up lunch. I had tomato soup and a sandwich today. It was actually pretty good. As you can see from my video, it is extra windy out here right now. So sorry about the wind noise in my video. We're not doing anything in the kingdom today, but I will go over at 3 p.m. with the mail. So let's head inside. Okay, after lunch in the kingdom, we've done two bends already on our things. We're just putting that flat steel in here, working it around. It's not that easy because the wood stove is not a forge and we have no oxyacetylene. The good old days of having the big rosebud and heating it up would have been over. But oh well, we're retired and having fun. So over here, we cleaned up the bearing here and got the grease and everything out. And this bearing is from Austria. Yes, Austria. So you have a UD-16 manufactured in the United States of America with Arnold Schwarzenegger's cousins making the bearings. Yes. Unreal. Also too at lunch when I was burning a craft dinner. Yeah, macaroni and cheese on the stove. Oh, I got the wrong one. Okay, we'll find that bearing. Oh, wait here. Okay, I'm back. I have the right piece of paper now and I can read it. Yes. So as I was burning the macaroni and cheese, better known in Canada as K KD, yes, craft dinner. Uh, ACDC, whole lot of rosy, yes. And you got to watch the video from December 2009, and it's live at River Plate, Argentina. That's where it has the best sound acoustics, especially Thunderstruck, yes. So I had the tunes just cranked right up while I was stirring the craft dinner, so I didn't burn it. Oh, well. So, okay, let's see if we can do another, how do you say, wrap or bend onto the wheel here. 
Okay, it's gonna take a couple more good heats and we're getting it slowly to come around. This pre-existing bender, whatever was in the material is giving us problems, but that's no problem. When we're done, we should be good. So we'll heat it up a couple more times. I had to trim it back so we can get it closer and closer, but just take your time, clamp it, beat it and heat it, beat it and heat it, yes. Also too, with this thing being out of round, okay, because we know it's not gonna be round, we can put springs, big springs on here to keep this, how would you say? So if it is wobbly, the springs will take it up, all right? We have to have a clutch brake because on the D69Us, all right, it's next to impossible to get these uh, tr transmissions into gear. The IH cats aren't too bad because the clutch brakes is actually in on the bell housing, so that's no problem. But the D69U is actually similar to this. It's out and exposed. So it's best to have the clutch brake working. Because uh, up here, it's so cold. The gear oil has enough friction in it that it uh, doesn't flow or whatever. It's like toffee. That that's why we, how come we need a clutch brake. All right, let's get this back in the stove and watch it heat up. Okay, we had a really good fit on the last one. We're doing another heat. Yes, more clamps, more clamps. I'm correcting our mistakes. Yes, I was clamping it too much on the one side and it kind of leaned in. All right, so we have to have the shop door open because it's freaking warm in here. Okay, so then I thought I'd be using this wood here. That's one of those oak pallets, but it's screwing it up. Yes, it's screwing it up. I was, how do you, I'll explain over here. All right, this stuff here is plywood, two by fours, everything like that. It's better known as crap, okay? Most people don't want to burn it, but I'm finding it burns a lot better. Yes, let's see if we can open the door here. All right, because we got the ring down in there. Can you see that, Les Nesmid? I'm kind of getting like a charcoal uh, elements out of this stuff here. But I got to leave the door open a bit to get the air to make it burn hot and fast, okay? I think we're in a low pressure system because this stove in theory with this wood should be burning out of control with the door closed and everything. But low pressure, we got to open it up and it's putting out some heat. All right, so hopefully one more heating and beating. And then we should have a brake ring. Yes, yeah, a brake ring. And then we can try welding it on so it can fall off. Oh, well. Okay, that worked out well. We got the final heat and beat on. Yes, heat and beat. All right. So I got it in. I put a little piece of tin guard in here to protect where the seal rides right in here. Yes. Ooh, that's warm. Yeah, I wonder what I was thinking there. Shouldn't put my finger where it doesn't belong. Yes. All right. So over here we had a nice gap. And we used the feeder rod. I think everybody on YouTube uh, calls it the Texas uh, MIG welding, okay? So we did that, but we didn't start down here because that's part of the flywheel. We got it up and we boogered it. Now we're going to let it cool uh, slowly and let it crack. Yes, let it crack. Because we want it to turn back to the natural shape or the shape that it's going to be in. We got it tight all around here, okay? Very pleased. And we also did a bolt check too. We can actually make little ears on here. Don't burn my finger again. Make little ears on here and a bolt will fit, all right? There's enough clearance or whatever. We figured it out that we can bolt it if we can't weld it, okay? So that that worked out rather well. We won't know that we want it to crack because when we build those big winter skinny freighting skis, we're a lot of heating and beating in there to get the shoeing and everything to fit and the saddles. And then we let it cool down like we do welds like this like long or whatever we don't do a complete weld we want it to break or cool down crack and then when it's happy then you can do the full welds and make it a finished ski so that's what we're going to do here is let it cool down and crack so that worked out good so while we're doing all the heating and stuff like that to amuse ourselves we cleaned the bearing we did all that documented it we measured it with the vernier caliber Got a guesstimation of the sizes in case the Austria, Austria numbers don't line up in today's world of Google. And also too, the problem why the staff was greasing it and it wasn't going anywhere, it wasn't going into the pilot bearing or the release bearing, IH is known for these braided lines so they break out. So what we did here was we screwed the grease gun in and pumped it, okay? So now, when you first start, the grease will come out here. So you turn it and turn it. Once this is full, this self greases itself. So when you pump it, it actually comes all the way around. So with it turning, it self greases itself so it can slide back and forth on this shaft for releasing the clutch or engaging the clutch. Oh, I'm hooked. All right. 
All right, let's go have a victory drink, a celebration, because we've made something that's going to crack and break. But the thought was we had fun. Almost 3 p.m. and I just got the quad out. Now I'll head up and do mail, then go over to the kingdom and see what my dad's up to. Sure is windy and chilly out here right now. 3 p.m. and I made it to the kingdom. There was nothing in the mail today. And as you can see behind me, it started snowing and the winds picked up. Those flags are really blowing. So let's head inside and see what my dad's up to. And I think I'm going to head over and start pulling the stuff out of my garden and see how much potatoes I got. Over at my garden now, I didn't want to touch it yet, but with the snow coming and it is getting pretty cold, I better start picking some of the stuff off regardless of how much I got. I'm going to leave the plants, but only take the vegetables. There's a few here, so let's take a look and see what I got. Sad year for my garden, I only got two jalapenos and one little cucumber, but that's okay. This was just an experiment. Now it's time to pull out the potatoes and see what I have. I know it's not dead yet, but stuff is starting to freeze and I don't want to lose the potatoes that I have. All I did was lift the plant up to see what was underneath and look what I already found. Wow, that is a big potato, so let's start digging and see what I got because I'm sure there's something here. Oh wow, I just start pulling back all the soil and look what I already found. We have one, two, look how big that one is. There's a third one here. Is there another one? Oh, look at that. Four big ones right off the bat. That is pretty cool. Now I'm going to keep digging down and see what else. Oh, look. Wow, look at that. That is a pretty big potato. This bin was planted May 21st, I'm pretty sure it was. Let me look. May 21st, 2024, and only one plant survived, and I already have this much out of it. That is extra cool. Let's keep digging and see what else I can find. Was a slow year for potatoes, but at least I got a few so I can keep these ones and spud them out and I can plant them again next year because that is all I did. I had a handful of potatoes from last year that I kept in a nice cool place and they sprouted out and I planted them. Now let's head back inside. Back in the house now and my dad was telling me that I had to eat my freshly grown potatoes, but I told him I have to keep some of them for next year. That way I can redo the whole process again and start growing. So I did leave him nice four big ones that he can eat for himself. Almost 3.30 and as you can see it is still pretty nasty out here and that wind's picking up and it's trying to snow. Now we'll head down to the shop. We have to change out one of the cameras in the loader shed so my dad can watch the dogs and keep an eye on the temperature in there. And then once that's done, that's it for today because look at the weather. Winter is coming. Over at the dog pens now, we are taking down this camera right here and switching it out with the one in the loader shed. That way my dad can keep an eye on the dogs and make sure the temperature in the loader shed is good. Not sure why the camera is dying and malfunctioning. It is inside a heated shop. Back in the house now and as you can see my dad is setting up the loader shed camera. The shop dogs are out, that's why the house dogs are freaking out, but I have the walkie talkies and I'll communicate to my dad and tell him which way to point the camera. Got the camera in the right spot, my dad's able to see the dog bed and the thermostat to check what the heat is in there, don't want the dog sweating. Not sure why the shop camera is working, it wasn't before but now it is. Looks like my dad's done in the loader shed, he just turned the light off, so I'll head back outside and see what he's up to. Just after 3.30 and I'm officially done in the kingdom, so I'll grab my dog treats and head on back into Whoville and do the weather at 5, and of course, it's still snowing. 5 p.m. and this is the temperature we're sitting at right now. It's 4 degrees Celsius, which is 39 degrees Fahrenheit. We even had the feels like on the bottom. As you can see, it has started snowing again. A lot is coming down. The ground's actually turning white, so let's head inside, let the dogs back in, make supper, and end my day. Okay, 5 o'clock in the kingdom and I came outside for some fresh air. Yes, fresh air. Oh yes, the 48 Chevy sedan delivery looks good beside the wing of the plane. Alright, so we're over here with the D69U, known as the Bismarck, because it has the big V-plow on it, okay? So this is my only experience with clutch brakes, riding the little wheel. So there we go. We don't put floorboards in the front or these things here because we want to see what's going on. Yes, we live in the land of frozen wasteland. Snow, ice, you name it. So we watch that little clutch brake and as you're trying to get that thing to grab to slow the transmission down so you can get it into gear so we know all about it. So that's our experience on that clutch brake and Sir Rodney relined that one last winter for us. Yeah, so we got lots of experience, probably 25 years or more watching the little clutch brake.
Okay, back in the shop here, and we got those grinding blades just in time. See, look how out of balance they are. Yes, yeah, out of balance. So you're trying to do precision guesswork on grinding, and that thing's out of balance. Wah, wah. So I think that's why I prefer these gifted flopper discs. Yes, yeah, so that's a number 60 on there. We did all the welds on the little clutch brake drum there on the shaft that was in here with the clamps on. Never trust it, or whatever. Don't take the clamps off until you're done because you trust it like an ex-wife. And then to protect the seal races on the top and the bottom, we had our little piece of tin custom bent, all right? So we made a mistake again for the first time in our life, thinking that's cast, cast steel, cast or whatever, just like mother's pots and pans or that stove. So we got out the 20 year old cast welding rods and guess what? We made a mess. So the Hobart handle, no, the Hobart 7018 saved the day, yes. So we did the initial welds in here with the, the cast. It went nuts, it went bad. Plus there's also the sharp edge from that thing being worn down. We didn't grind it because we had to have this fit in tight and it was a tight fit, okay? So we got it welded. We welded on the outside and then we did the grind, okay? So we're grinding away thinking this is gonna crack out. Once it's cracked out, it's now just a seal holder. So it won't be a clutch break anymore. It's gonna be the seal holder to keep it together. So that the shaft in the piece here, the shaft comes up higher and this here, see my fingers? All right, it's pushing down on that bearing and then there's a nut that goes on this thread here. So, okay. So we've got it ground. We got that thing going pretty good. We're very pleased. Oh, we'll do a test fit here. It's hard to do everything with one hand. All right, so here's Sir Rodney Reed lined that for us. Nice thick lining. Kind of fits pretty good. Close enough for the girls I go with. Let's see if we have enough talent. Down she goes. Down she goes. A little more. There. All right. So that's in there. This slides in here like this. Everything is simulated. Everything is loose. I don't know why. Because I think they expect some play or whatever. All right. Down we go. There. All right. So over here, this cover goes on. That is the adjuster. So it's oblob. Oh, hand and eye coordination. Okay. So this is oblob. So you can adjust it. So the backside of this here is pushing on here. Okay. So then there's a rod that comes in through here and it's worked to this lever here. Okay. See that? So when the clutch is going this way or whatever, Oh, see how loose that is. That's marked. It's got to be improved. Yeah. So when this is going this way and that way, that's the clutch brake working. So this will work very pleased. It's going to just be perfect. There's enough looseness in everything here that we're quite happy. We're not sure if we have to put some springs in here. I think we're good with just the nuts holding it on uh, so it can go. So this should work. The only time this thing's gonna be touching the drum is to stop it. So it's not very many revolutions and I can probably get 10 years out of that uh, lining there. And then as Sir Rodney's retiring, we'll get him to reline it as a retirement thing. So we're very pleased, successful day. We didn't cry. But we got it done. We were quite surprised that that thing didn't crack out. But then again, I'm a welder, not a grinder. Okay, at coffee time, I did a quick Google search. Here's the thing we printed off to put it in the file folder. I used the glossy uh, printer. Yes, the glossy one. So we got to make sure you can zoom in and see the numbers. So there we go. So this is a popular Austrian, Austrian name brand or whatever. You can even buy them on eBay. Oh, the fingers. Oh. One more, two more, three more. Yes, totally unprepared for this, like my divorce. One more, there, there we go. There's the same bearing on eBay and stuff like that. It's so only 1870 for US. So that's a good sign. It's got the right measurements and everything. It's on the last page here. So there's the measurements. So Arnold Schwarzenegger's family in Austria has kept the business alive. That's how you say it or spell it or whatever. That's the name. I'll screw it up because I'm English. I screw up the English language all the time for some reason. I don't know why. 
Okay, that's enough for us. We finished that clutch brake drum thingy, Bob. Yes, it's not round, but who cares? It'll work and slow the clutch down so we can get that gear into gear on the grader. Yes, that's the least of our worries as the clutch brake not working. We got brakes and a few other things. All right, that was a fun day. Nasty weather. Let's go put the skidoo suit on. Yes, the skidoo suit on and go walk the dogs. Yes, and then we'll make a video and drink some more beer. Yes, all right. So I'll talk to you guys later.